What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel and welcome to week 8 of WBE. This week we're facing off versus Wolf Glick and the DC Dracovish. Now, this is going to be a very difficult match. Um, our teams, like I feel like I have a slight advantage on paper, but Wolf is arguably one of the best players of all time, so we have to be very careful with him. Uh, I know that my team looks like a Sun team on paper, so what I want to do is sort of bait him into bringing a lead that he would versus Sun, because this looks like standard Sun, you know, Charizard, Venusaur, Klefki. Like he's gonna want to bring some kind of sun, and like some kind of anti-sun. So what I'm doing is I'm just gonna fake him out. <laughs> and by that I mean uh, I'm actually gonna be running a very strange set that for some reason puts a lot of work in versus this team. Um, he has things like Rillaboom, Drift Blim, uh, Dracovish, a lot of things that uh, rely on being fast and or um, are weak to Mandibuzz. So what I'm gonna be doing is running this hit on top. Fake out triple axle close combat sucker punch, uh, 252 HP, 252 attack, adamant nature with four speed just in case he tries to speed creep his scrafty to outspeed me to fake out, um, and the intimidate. So this thing is a potential Dynamax Pokemon. It has coverage to hit pretty much everything, you know, uh, close combat for stab fighting moves, triple axle to hit the uh, Rillaboom, uh, sucker punch to hit the drip blim, etc. So, if, if I Dynamax it, it gets some pretty good max moves, and I just got a new Twitch follower, thank you. <laughs> I'm not even streaming this, I just have that on. So, basically, this thing is a secondary Dynamax option, um, and it's because it's playing second fiddle to what I really want to Dynamax. And this is a very strange set, but a very fun one. Uh, this is Offensive Weakness Policy, Weak Armor, Mandibuzz. We're running Bone Rush, Brave Bird, Lash Out, and Steel Wing, because it's great coverage versus his team. And basically, if I go for a fake out onto my own Mandibuzz, I can Dynamax and always get off my uh, weak armor and then be double speed and be very difficult to outspeed. Because this thing has a good speed tier, and at plus two, it's very difficult to uh, outspeed. Now, if I end up getting a weakness policy off, then uh, this thing becomes very threatening. It's attack stat. I had to run adamant max attack because that's the only way I'm actually going to be picking up KOs with this thing. And the main draw to this is that if I sucker punch my, my own Mandibuzz and go for this Lash Out, Lash Out is doubled in speed because of the weak armor. But because we also dropped our defense stage, uh, it's doubled in base power. So that's going to be really useful for getting some pretty cheeky KOs on the lead. And yeah, it's just a really fun Pokemon. Overall, it has a really nice, um, it has really nice, uh, what's it called, matchup versus this team. Uh, Charizard, we're running Wakanberry. Uh, that's for the Jolteon in case it shows up. It'll allow me to live a hit from it. Uh, it's just standard Heat Wave, Air Slash, Scorching Sands, Protect. Just enough speed, so um, if I decide to... Or, I forget what I'm outspeeding with this thing. It, it's been a couple of days, but yeah, it, it's it's basically enough speed for what I need. It's outspeed, and the rest just thrown into uh, HP. We have a Life Orb Venusaur. This thing outspeeds Dracovish, if it's Jolly Max Speed with uh, No Choice Scarf. Max Special Attack, 36 HP, Sludge Bomb, Leaf Storm, Protect, Weather Ball. I think I'd be more likely to Dynamax Venusaur than Charizard in this matchup, because it has a better matchup versus this team overall. We have uh, Light Clay Klefki with Prankster, Light Screen, Sunny Day, Reflect, Dazzling Gleam. Nothing too special here. Uh, it's mostly just meant to allow me to uh, set up screens, make it easier for me to take some hits, and uh, possibly just, you know, if they go for some kind of weakness policy strategy, uh, I'm able to cut that damage a bit, so um, my Pokemon won't be immediately one-shot if need be. And finally, we have Togepi with some interesting tech on it. Uh, I know that my team is pretty fast on paper. I do have that Mudsdale option, but I'm certain that he'll probably bring some kind of Trick Room versus me because the Escavalier doesn't have a terrible matchup once the Charizard's gone. So we're going to be running Follow Me after you protect and charm with zero speed. Uh, basically, under Trick Room, if I end up in a situation where it's like Charizard or Venusaur versus, or really anything, uh, versus a Trick Room option, I can after you my own Pokemon and uh, go for an attack to actually uh, be able to move first under Trick Room since Togepi speed ties with the Scavalier. So yeah, uh, that's it for the team builder guys. If you want to do me a favor, leave a like on the video, support the channel. All the likes have been uh, really, really helpful recently. And yeah, also comment down below, uh, what do you think about the Mandibus strategy? I think it's pretty cool. Uh, I want to see how well it works out. But yeah, with that, let's go ahead and get into the battle. All right, guys. Well, it seems we have a bit of a challenge ahead of us. We're facing off versus 2016 world champion Wolf Glick and his team, the DC Dracovish. Now, on paper, I feel like my team has a pretty solid matchup versus this. Um, honestly, I, I feel like the tech this week is going to be that weak arm and Mandibus, which I just happened to showcase in a video the other day. I was, I was completely 
like doing that just for fun. I didn't realize how good of a matchup it would have versus him if I was able to pull it off. But once again, like that's only if he brought the team that I think he's going to bring. So if you guys want to do me a favor, support the channel, leave a like, and uh, subscribe for more content. And there isn't a Wigglytuff. This is actually a solid matchup. Okay, okay, this is a solid matchup. Um, I can lead off with what I want. We're going to go Mandibuzz Hitmontop. Yeah, we're gonna go Mandibuzz hit him on top. That isn't bad at all. Ooh. <laughs> I'm actually really happy with that. Um, I think in the back here, I have to be really careful with that Diglett. Diglett will trap me, and I have to be real careful with that. Um, let me think. Sun mode could be useful, and it looks like he might go for a Trick Room mode, so Togepi could be pretty nice. And I think my last Pokemon is going to have to be Venusaur, just because it has a solid matchup versus everything else in the field. So we're not going to go for Sun Offense immediately. We're going to go for that. Um, we're going to go for that fast, weak armor shenanigan stuff. Uh, and on top of that, we have After You on the Togepi. So if he ends up going Trick Room, I shouldn't be in a terrible position. I have to uh, not lose this game. <laughs> I've been on a bit of a losing streak, and unfortunately the game that I would very much not like to lose is against the world champion from 2016. Diglett the Sociable and Drift Blimp. Um, what are we going to see? We're going to see like some kind of brutal swing tech. Alright, so we do get an Intimidate off on the Drift Blimp. I don't mind that too much. Um, and the Diglett, the Intimidate's pretty nice. I'll actually go ahead and I don't want to Dynamax yet. I'll just lash out on the Drift Blim and Sucker Punch myself to ensure that goes off. Uh, anything that comes in is going to be taking some pretty hefty damage since it's double power, and I believe it one shots the Drift Blim. I don't want to burn my Dynamax just yet either. Ooh, as he will burn his Dynamax. This should be doing some pretty hefty damage to it. I kind of wish I Dynamaxed myself, but I should take just about any hit from Drifflin as long as it's special. And we're also going to be outspeeding it immediately. What if it's weakness policy? That'd be probably my greatest fear, but I could always uh, sucker punch it again. This Diglett protects, makes sense. We're going to go ahead and self sucker punch, activating our weak armor. Lowering our defense, doubling our speed, and it's going to make this a pretty hefty uh, lash out. As we just barely miss out on the one shot, is it who it is weakness policy? Luckily, we do have Sucker Punch on this thing, uh, on the Hitmontop. But if he ends up targeting into the Hitmontop, that could be an issue. Yep, so we're going to lose our Hitmontop immediately. I can just follow me, and I could probably live with that. Uh, I might need to Dynamax my... <laughs> I might need to Dynamax this uh, Mandibuzz right now. So we'll go ahead and we'll go into the Goat Togepi. Togepi does have Follow Me, which will allow me to take any hit from that um, Drift Blim and preserve my my uh, Mandibuzz here. So, hmm, let me think. I would like to keep up the speed, but I could build up my defenses a bit by going for pretty much any move here. Um, I don't want to. I don't want to reveal anything too strong, though. Like anything that could be useful. What does he have again? Nothing that I wouldn't just reveal, anyway. So, um, he has mostly physical attackers. I should be able to KO with a Steel Spike. So we'll Steel Spike up, and uh, I'll follow me. From this range, Steel Spike should KO. It's it's at really, really low health. I'm kind of hoping he goes for a Rock Slide on my Mandibuzz, because that should put me in a pretty good spot. It will give me my weakness policy. And Diglett may be carrying it. And what if he was Sucker Punch Diglett? What if we had like the exact same strategy here? All right, I would very much like for him to uh, go for that Rock Slide. It'd be really helpful here. Maybe a Memento? Stealth Rock. Okay, so he he was prepared for the Charizard more than anything. As nice as my Steel Spike catches nothing. Alright, um... I think what I'll do here is I'll just Airstream to keep up the pressure. 
and follow me once more. I could also go for a protect. I should take just about any hit from the Mandibuzz. Because I am Dynamaxed. Uh, maybe I just protect here. Because a memento from Diglett could be really annoying. I believe it gets it, too. And I don't mind having my, uh... I don't mind having the Mana Buzz in the field right now. As they withdrawn the Diglett, probably going to go into Scrafty? Musharna, okay. And Brave Bird gets revealed, okay. Well, what they don't know is I have After You. Which is a good reason for me to have uh, protected here. I'm kind of hoping they set up Trick Room, honestly, because I could put in some work there. I could I could put in some major work. Alright, and I still have one more turn of Dynamax, too, which is phenomenal. What's in the back here? Musharna should drop to a single max darkness, I believe. I kinda wish we got our weakness policy off, that would've been great. There's the Dracovish. Okay, they made Trick Room. They made Trick Room. What I wanna do here is just I should take a hit from the Dracovish since I'm going to go first, so I'll just max Airstream and uh, follow me. And the next turn I should be able to after you. Yeah, and Togepi should definitely live the hit because we're following me. It'll go before the Dracovish. As they just withdraw, so I should just get a KO on the Dracovish, I think, here. The rest of their team is pretty passive. Ooh, okay. That didn't do quite as much as I hoped, but I think the rest of my team is a pretty good matchup. There's the Ficious Rend. It's going to be doing not enough, I think. Yeah, there he is. There's the boy. That's the Togepi I love, man. <laughs> and we have our weak armor boost, so... I think my play here is just to target Dracovish and go for a Protect. Or maybe I hold on to Mandibuzz. Let me think here. Dracovish isn't staying in, right? And I am going to be faster than it. Our Steel Spike didn't go off, so it would be a pretty scary hit to take. Because we're at minus two defense. We have Venusaur in the back. Uh, I might need to keep Venusaur healthy. Here's what I'll do. I'll throw away my boost right now. And I will protect here. Because they shouldn't KO Venusaur from this range, I think. As they withdraw the Diglett, okay. Unless they're like choice banded, Venusaur should live because we have quite a bit of uh <laughs> we have quite a bit of uh, HP investment. And they do reveal Protect on the Dracovish, so they're not choiced at all, which is actually phenomenal. I'll go ahead and I'll go for my Life Orb Leaf Storm, which should KO the Dracovish. And... I think here... Let me think, do I hold on to my Venusaur? <sighs> kind of concerned, because Musharna could just attack me. I think I'm good to just Leaf Storm and follow me. If they go for the Trick Room, um, that'll actually be better for me. I kind of hope they Trick Room here. I really want to reveal the After You tech. <laughs> Come on, Trick Room. Trick Room. They Trick Room. Okay. Alright, so Dracovish is really, really scary here, 
but if I can remove it from the field, I'm in a winning position. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go for my Life Orb Leaf Storm, which I'm pretty certain will KO from this range. And we're going to after you our Venusaur here. Because we're minimum speed, we will out we will underspeed this uh, Musharna. Wait, will we? Did we go for... <gasps> no, I forgot. We had... Oh my god, no. I messed up. I messed up. Because I forgot our Togepi has uh, speed boosts. Completely forgot our Togepi had speed boosts. I have to remove that Dracovish 100% here if I want to win. And we are... Ah, dang it. Okay. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go Mandibuzz. And... I think I have to protect here and hope that they target into me with a Psychic. If they double into Venusaur, I lose. Dang, I completely forgot. We, we would have had him right there. I forgot we had a speed boost on the Togepi. Because we were going for Airstreams. There's the Psychic. It looks like they rended. Yep, there's the rend. Unfortunately, that's going to lose us our Mandibuzz. And I think that's just going to be game for game one. Yeah, I completely forgot we had a speed boost on the Togepi. Ah, dang it. Alright, Venusaur's gonna drop to Rox. Rox was an interesting tech for him. That's definitely for the for the Charizard. Yep, we're at plus two speed. I am so dumb. <laughs> okay, uh, we'll go ahead and we'll just after you nothing. Yeah, I completely forgot that we had a speed boost in the Togepi, and that really bit me in the butt there. Unfortunately, revealing that was really, really bad for us. That was really, really bad for us, because now he's uh, going to be a bit more cautious under Trick Room. Alright. Let's see, how can I adjust? We know a bit more about what he's bringing. Um... Let me think. On the lead, he went Driftblim and Diglett. So I'm assuming Diglett had a way of self proccing the weakness policy. I might just go with the same lead, to be honest. Mandibuzz was really scary for him. And that was actually physical. Um, that was actually physical. I believe it was physical. I, I'm pretty sure it was um, physical drift blend. Hmm. Screens could be really useful. I may go Mandibuzz Klefki here instead of the Hitmontop, but Hitmontop could still be useful. I'll go Hitmontop and Venusaur in the back, and I think that's probably my play. Because Hitmontop is still going to be really, really nice um, as long as I don't lose it immediately. Because the issue there was we lost the Hitmontop way too early. It would have been really useful versus Dracovish, which we now know is not Choice Scarf and may be very, very slow. <laughs> Could also be Iron Ball Dracovish. That's not something I considered. Iron Ball Dracovish would be an interesting tech to help him beat Mudsdale, but I'm not sure if it underspeeds. Let me check. I believe Iron Ball halves your speed, right? I'm going to see if that would even be possible. Dracovish, Mudsdale. If Dracovish was like absolutely minimum speed, like a brave nature. Zero speed, level 50. It'd end up being like 30 something speed, which I don't believe under speeds. I'm just doing this to uh, make sure this isn't something you would run. 67. Ooh, it would actually with the Iron Ball. It would, so that could be something... Oh wait, no, I'm, I'm dumb. <laughs> Alright. 36. So it would... Yeah, it would underspeed me. Or actually, Chai. It would speed tie. Interesting. Okay, um... I wouldn't mind setting up a screen here. 
And I'll actually just go for the raw lash out into the uh, Musharna. And we'll set up a light screen. Or actually reflect wouldn't be bad. There's the fake out. It's gonna give me a weak armor boost. He's likely going hard trick room here. So we're gonna set up this reflect. There it is. All right. So I'm gonna play it safe here. I'm gonna go hard into the Hitmon top here because they shouldn't go for a psychic move. <clears throat> and I don't believe they have anything that switches in on Deagleam all that well. So we'll Dazzling Gleam. Yeah, if he uh, tries to get anything in on the Dazzling Gleam, it, I don't think he has much for it, really. And with the Reflect Up, we should take hits pretty well. Especially since uh, Scrafty would switch out here first, I believe, which means that my Hitmontop would intimidate it if he brings in the Dracovish, and then we have Fake Out Pressure. Alright, so it looks like Scrafty's staying in. Or did I get the order wrong? Am I dumb? Does it not take into account Trick Room when the switching happens? No, he's just gonna let me hit that Scrafty. Maybe he went for an Ice Punch? Head Smash, okay. And we avoid, which is honestly a little bit annoying because we would have gotten some pretty hefty damage off on that thing. Alright, I kind of want to anticipate the Musharna Dynamaxing here. So I'm just gonna double back out into my Mandibuzz. And uh, go for another Dazzling Gleam. Hey, alright. There's the Rillaboom. Okay, this is pretty good for me. Alright. So we're going to double back out into the Mandibuzz here. And the Rillaboom is his G-Max, which could be really threatening. It's a very powerful Pokemon. Uh, he did go for the Psychic, so we called him on that. Get a nice little chunk of damage on the Rillaboom. Just a nice little chunk there. Um, and I'm not too concerned with this thing. Rillaboom doesn't get any rock coverage. They don't really have anything to hit the Mandibuzz with. So what I may do here is just... Uh, I kind of want a Brave Burden to Rillaboom for damage. But Musharna is probably the biggest issue. I'll just lash out into it. And uh, I'll continue to, to Dazzling Gleam. I don't really see anything too annoying here. He withdraws the Musharna. Hopefully I catch the Scrafty here. Yeah, there's the Scrafty. So the last shot's going to be doubled in power, and I actually hit this thing for super effective. I know Rillaboom can go for a ground move, but I'm not too concerned with it right now because, you know, Klefki's uh, bold max defense, and also we're behind a, a Reflect here. Go for this last shot. How much is it going to do? Probably not going to KO because it's times 4 resisted, but we can dream. We can dream, man. There's the high horsepower. It's going to be doing negligible damage. Ooh, actually... Yo, that's banded. That's got to be banded Rillaboom. I I'm certain that's banded. Okay. How do I play this out? I could get in my... My hit on top for that slot. How many turns of Trick Room are left? There's one turn of Trick Room left, so I can take full advantage of that by going hard in a Venusaur where my Amanda Buzz is. And I can actually just go right into uh, Hitmontop for the uh, for the Klefki. Because Wolf might try to make a read here. And uh, yeah. Okay, that's pretty good. I am carrying um, Max Attack on my... <laughs> I am carrying Max Attack on my Hitmontop, so that could be really useful here. Because Max Darkness into a Sludge Bomb should KO the uh, Musharna. high horsepower. Yeah, I'm gonna say that's banded damage. And I think they would try to set up the Trick Room here. I, actually, they set up Grassy Train for me, so the, the uh, Leaf Storm should do it. Twisted Dimensions return to normal. 
Yeah, we're gonna Leaf Storm and we're actually just gonna max Darkness. I'm cool with Dynamaxing this thing. It seems pretty good for the matchup so far. We still don't know his last Pokemon. I'm gonna say it might be Dragovish. Wait, do we? Because he let off Musharna, Scrafty. He's revealed Rillaboom. Yeah, I think that's all we've seen so far. He might be concerned about Sleep Powder, but uh, I think we're good. There's the Dynamax. Most likely the Rillaboom. I'd be pretty okay with Dynamax Rillaboom here. Yeah, there it is. You can tell by the camera angle. But we are going to be Dynamaxing ourselves, uh, which should allow us to live the hit since he's at minus one. pretty good about this. Drum cell is gonna hurt, don't get me wrong. As he protects, okay, good good call by Wolf there. Because I did reveal Sucker Punch earlier. Weed that up pretty well. That does like no damage. And I think the Rillaboom is gonna be in range. This should, I think this will two shot the Musharna, since we're adamant. I could double into the Musharna here, and I think always pick up a KO. I could even Sludge Bomb here just to be safe. Rillaboom isn't too scary right now. Considering the damage you just did with that Reflect and everything on the field. And uh, we are Light Clay, how many more turns of Reflect do we have? Two turns of Reflect, okay. So I'm just going to Sludge Bomb into Musharna. I don't think Rillaboom would... Uh, I don't think Rillaboom's too keen on not protecting. He may have some move to protect, but I think it's Choice Banded. And if you're going to Dynamax the Rillaboom, it's, it's likely that you may have some kind of move that would allow you to protect. There's the Max Quake, attempting to allow Musharna to live the hit. We're going to take negligible damage, though, because of that awesome Reflect. <laughs> and yeah, Sludge Bomb after... Or max darkness after the sludge bomb should do it. I don't want to go for leaf storm because it would lower my special attack and it has a chance to miss. Oh, will that KO? I'm hoping that KOs. Yeah, okay, that was that was a close one. I was really concerned about that. And now the ruler boom is at minus one again. Alright. God, that, that recovery is really helpful here. Grassy Terrain is gone, which means Rillaboom's damage output is cut a bit. And I think maybe he would have gone for Max Knuckle earlier if he had it. Do I have what I need to deal with Dracovish? Pretty certain I do. I kind of want to double into it. But I'm also slightly concerned that the Dracovish may protect here. Maybe I just hit the Rillaboom. Yeah, I'll just hit the Rillaboom here. I'll max Knuckle into it as well. Or I could max Strike. Max Strike wouldn't be a bad play. Uh, we'll max Knuckle. I'm pretty certain it's a slow Dracovish. Here's the max Quake. Alright, it's gonna boost his special defense a bit. There's the sludge bomb. Yeah, that and the max knuckle should do it and then have sucker punch pressure. So I think if my Hitmontop lives this Vicious Rend... Ooh, okay, Psychic Fangs. So he's gonna break my, my Reflect there. But that's fine, Klefki can come in and reset it. 
we still what was his last Pokemon? Scrafty? Yeah, his last Pokemon Scrafty. Um So he's probably gonna want to Let me do this. I might double into Klefki. No, I need I need the uh I need the Intimidate, so I'll go I'll go Mandibuzz here. I'll go Mandibuzz. Head Smash would KO his own Scrafty. So I think it's my play to um, just Brave Bird into the uh, Manda or Brave Bird into the uh, Scrafty every single time. I could just double into the Scrafty, I think, and that'd be safe. Because I am faster than this Dracovish. So we'll Brave Bird the Scrafty, and I think we have all the tools we need to beat the uh, Dracovish. I kind of want a close combat. Yeah, I'll just double into the Scrafty here. There's the Fake Out. Into the Mandibuzz. Good thing we close combated it. And also now we're faster. There's the flinch. Close combat will KO the Scrafty, and I think we have all the tools we need to win now. Because we can just spam Dazzling Gleam. There's the Ficious Rend. As we do not survive that, And I think Dazzling Gleam into Brave Bird should do it. We're only at minus one. And Dracovish... I, I don't believe Dracovish takes these sets. Because he has to take two of them. We're well, Brave Bird here. And Dazzling Gleam. Or I could actually set up a Sunny Day. Just to mess with him. Hmm. Do I Sunny Day? No, I think I always just double Brave Bird. Yeah, I think I just always just double attack. That's minus one, unfortunately, so it's not going to be doing as much as I would like it to. Uh, hopefully we can survive this vicious rend. We are bold max defense. I think if my Klefki survives here, we can win. Yeah, we do survive, so that is going to be a win there for this game. That was a really close match. Watch Dracovish have, like, <laughs> some kind of priority move I've never heard of. God, Dracovish is so threatening. And I'm pretty certain that's like Iron Ball. I have no speed investment in this uh, Klefki. That's got to be like Iron Ball Dracovish. Alright. And there it goes. So we do pick up a win here. Um, I have to be really careful with that Dracovish, man. I have to be real, real careful. But here's the thing, if you noticed how he's been playing, he's mostly concerned about the Mandibuzz, right? He's mostly concerned about Mandibuzz and stuff. He's no longer preparing for Charizard, so that may be my play, to just switch up and go Charizard. That's always the hard part about these battles, you have to like decide, do I go with what's been working, or do I switch it up? I think Klefki is a great Pokemon, it really walls his team. Hmm. I'm trying to think. What would I do? Is there any way I can one-shot Musharna? Because I could lead off with uh, Hitmontop. I think I'm going to go Hitmontop Mandibuzz again. Bring Klefki in the back. I think I go with exactly what I brought last time, but play it just a bit differently on the lead. Yeah, I can play just a bit differently on the lead because I could actually one-shot the Musharna. To give myself weakness policy though. I actually don't have a way of self proccing except for triple axle, which is a horrible decision. Because uh, <laughs> each individual triple axle will give me a minus one defense, and each individual triple axle will also hurt me a bit more. Drift Blim and Diglett. So back to game one. We're back to game one here. Hmm. Let me think. I mean, the weakness policy on that thing was really concerning. 
And I did lose my Hitmontop the first time. I could max Hitmontop here. I could max the Hitmontop, and that might allow me to survive. Because he's not going to self-proc. There's no way he self-procs, and I will go after him. I'm going to go for it. I'm doubling the Drift Bloom, but I'm Dynamaxing Hitmontop. I don't believe he's going to self-proc. And if he does, I am a Salt Vest, so I, have a, I think I have a bit of a chance of living. Here's the thing, he should not expect me to Dynamax this thing, but he may just Airstream. Uh, I don't know, this is a really risky play. It's a really risky play. He, he would have to self-proc, I think. And my Mandibuzz will be slower than him, so I will get both of these hits off. Oh, he is just gonna self-proc, yikes, okay. That's not phenomenal. That's not phenomenal. <laughs> Hopefully he's a special attacker, because I think I take that... Oh no, I think I take physical slightly better. As he max lightnings. He max lightning. We don't live, but I can set up screens. Okay. This should do a solid amount. Okay, that's in range of the second one. And if he's max lightning, that means he's a special attacker. So I can just uh, I can just set up a light screen here. Yeah, we'll uh, max darkness one more time, and we'll light screen up. He could be mixed though. bit annoyed I lost Mandibuzz so early though, but if I can remove this Drift Blim, I think we're in a decent spot. Because he doesn't max guard. It's the max Phantasm. Klefki should eat that. Oh, he's gotta be mixed, dude. There's no way he's not mixed, right? Oh, he crit me through it. Dang it. Oh, man. That's really unfortunate. Klefki was probably really, really important to winning the rest of this game. As Mementos too. Mmm. <laughs> I think I just lost. I think I just lost because of that crit. Unless I can crit him back. I don't think there's a way we win here. Oh, did I just crit him back? <laughs> Unfortunately, my crit is one that uh, it doesn't do as much for me. It is 2 on 2 though. It is 2 on 2 and I still have my Dynamax Mon. And Venusaur. Uh, it kind of just depends on what he's brought. There's the Dracovish. Okay, uh, so I think I, I should max Darkness and try to combo into a KO. <laughs> Ooh, Musharna. Um, I have to play this pretty carefully. So he could... His Musharna is honestly the scariest thing in the field. I have to hope that Max Darkness, after a Leaf Storm KOs, it's probably the only way I'm getting it. But if he protects that Dracovish, or if he protects the Musharna, and just attacks straight up with the Dracovish, that'd be really, really concerning. I do still have Sucker Punch. I might have to play like that. As he protects the Dracovish. Okay, so it looks like I made the correct play. Hopefully this combination of moves will somehow KO. We land the Leaf Storm, it is Life Orb boost, but Musharna is really, really bulky. Please tell me this KOs, man. Please tell me this KOs. <laughs> we do still have Sucker Punch, which could be useful. Ah, no, we do not prevent the Trick Room, unfortunately. We still have Sucker Punch, though, which will KO the Musharna, but I think it's going to get us with, like, Psychic Fangs and stuff. There's the Trick Room. I 
would say that if he does anything, he should Psychic the Hitmontop and go for Psychic Fangs into the Venusaur. So I could Sucker Punch Musharna here for the KO and go for Protect. And that will allow me to keep both of my Pokemon for the next turn. If he ends up doing if he ends up doing that. But I don't know if Sucker Punch KOs at minus two from this range. I would hope so. I would hope so. And then I have to just start throwing out Leaf Storms. There's my Protect. Tell me you Psychic Fangs that. And we fail. Aw, oh, man. Rain Dance. No! <laughs> no! He definitely just KO'd the, the Hitmontop. 100% that's going into Hitmontop, man. <gasps> we live. Hello? Okay, I think we still Sucker Punch the Musharna. And I think I have to double protect. I have to go for the double. Because I don't think I live that hit. Yeah, because we don't have a Reflect up. I got a double. Come on, Venusaur. You can double. You can double, man. Ah, we failed the double. Sucker Punch fails again. What are you going for? Rained. Oh, he's he's big brained. As he psychic fangs me. And that will seal the deal. I have no way of winning now. Alright, well that's going to be game. Unfortunately, we couldn't pick up a win. Uh, I'll just sucker punch the Musharna. <laughs> Again. Yeah, uh, the rain the rain dance was a really, really smart call. Would that have KO'd? Yeah, it would have KO'd. Uh, but we will just get KO'd here by a fish friend. Or actually, we might live it. No, we're not. <laughs> I was gonna say since we went first, we might live. All right, but yeah, that was a that was a really solid set. Uh, I'm really happy how that turned out. Even though I didn't win, I think that was a really really good game, and I and I really enjoyed playing Wolf here. But yeah, uh, if you guys want to do me a favor, yeah, I know for a fact you guys are already subscribed to Wolf. Go subscribe to Wolf. Uh, but yeah, uh, I am going to possibly get into a post game call with him. I let me see if he's down for a post game call. Down for a post game call. Because I, I haven't done those the past two weeks, but I've been meaning to. But yeah, uh, regardless, even if he's not able to right now, uh, do me a favor, guys. Leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, and yeah, I will see you guys in the next one.